as you may know, it's my job to corrupt young people with a contagious, infectious idea of individual freedom. It's my job to encourage you to think for yourself, question authority. Imagine you enter a strange room where a computer tells you that hidden somewhere in the building is a cube. Then it asks you what does the cube contain. Most of us would recognise this to be a futile question. The cube could be large or small. It could be a solid block or a vacuum chamber of nothing but sparse particles of gas. Or it might contain any one of billions of permutations of familiar or novel objects. You could never give a precise justifiable answer. But if you were asked what does the cube not contain, you could give many answers. For example, the cube couldn't possibly contain the Amazon River, the planet Mars, or absurd objects such as a bed made of sleep. In fact, there'd be more perfectly valid answers to this second question than you could list in a million lifetimes. This illustrates an interesting asymmetry concerning the contents of this cube. Despite there being countless possibilities and impossibilities, without evidence from the cube itself, we can only ever make valid justifiable statements about what is not inside the cube, not what is. It's true that someone claiming, for example, that the cube contained nothing but a wooden spoon might be right. But since without evidence they could provide no valid justification for such a claim, there'd be literally no reason for anyone to accept it. What if we were talking about a realm of existence independent of our universe, that like the concealed cube was physically inaccessible to us? Would things be different? Would we be able to deduce precisely what occupied such a realm, such as a divine being? No, there's the same asymmetry as before. Countless kinds of being might exist independently of our universe. Countless logically impossible beings cannot. But while we can list many kinds of being that can't exist there because they violate logic, we can't list those, if any, that do. Any attempt to argue that a specific divine being exists in an inaccessible realm of reality is an attempt to argue for either the impossible or the unknowable. Logic alone can refute impossible beings, but it can't show that possible beings actually exist without evidence. If you can't at some point provide measurable, verifiable evidence for the specific being you claim exists, all the argument in the world won't establish your claim as fact. This is one reason why, as soon as anyone claims they have a logical argument that requires the existence of one personal creator of our universe, we know it'll be fallacious because they failed at a basic level to understand what's required to establish such an existence claim. It's just a question of identifying where the errors are. A belief in one or more gods might sustain you in your own life, but when you pressure others to adopt your beliefs and participate in practices associated with those beliefs, you give up the luxury of not having to explain yourself. You give yourself the burden of proof. And certain reasons that might seem sound when justifying a belief to yourself are simply not valid when you're trying to establish existence claims to other people, however passionately you express them. You can't pester and bully people and then retreat behind faith when challenged on your behaviour. And if you can't demonstrate that gods exist, resorting to emotional blackmail to try to get people to believe is a dishonest tactic. When those who don't believe in gods show theistic claims to be invalid, it's often claimed that they're trying to prove gods don't exist. In fact, all they're doing is exposing flawed reasoning and encouraging intellectual honesty. It's understandable that when some have their claims debunked, it's an uncomfortable feeling, and employing red herrings becomes an attractive way to wriggle out of admitting their mistakes. But debunking claims about the existence of gods is just showing those who make such claims that they can't assert what they're trying to assert. Could life forms of vastly greater intelligence and power exist beyond the current reach of our perception and technology? Certainly. But even if we were ever to find evidence of greater intelligence, that would still not constitute evidence of specific gods. Even if some kind of intelligence initiated the existence of our universe, there's nothing to say what the nature of that intelligence was whether it was a single rather than a collective intelligence, whether or not part of that intelligence remains interested in the universe, let alone the affairs of humans, whether or not that intelligence is aware of our tiny planet, let alone capable of communicating with its inhabitants, or even whether or not that intelligence still exists. When you impartially review a factual claim that, for example, one divine universe creator currently monitors and judges every human life, the layers of unjustified assumption needed to make such a claim become starkly apparent. One would be no less justified in proposing a race of aliens that created our universe with an advanced machine and annihilated themselves in the process. 
Without logic or evidence at your disposal, you have no grounds for demanding that anyone agrees with you. You certainly have no grounds for bullying and ostracizing them when they don't. But if that's the way you deal with independent thought, your fallacious arguments will continue to be exposed until you grow out of your need for everyone to subscribe to your faith-based ideas. When you start being honest with yourself about what you know and what you don't know, you're likely to realize that you're in no position to be shouting the odds. And when you understand that it's behavior that has the practical impact on our lives, you may realize that it's not whether we believe in gods, but how we treat each other that says the most about our character. If you attack, condemn, or use emotional blackmail on people because they don't share your belief in one or more gods, you're invited to consider what that says about you and how it squares with the values you claim to embrace. Any reality is an opinion. You make up your own reality. Think for yourself.